tissue tore away from the muscle, which creates stress fractures. And I just kept running on it, and then it fractured. So I have stress fracture in this one. Yeah. Okay, everybody. So I'm going to, I don't, let's see how this thing is. Ooh, is that way too dark, or is that okay? No, oh, I like that. Was all right? You sure? Yeah. All right. Cool. Sorry. No, I'll I like it. Turn this light on. Don't worry. Okay. Okay. So let's refresh our memory. Uh, what we are even supposed to do with some of these? Oh, my paper's not going to help me. So your directions. Uh, we'll take a look at number 13. You're supposed to find all of the zeros. So remember what that means. That means you are going to find all the places where this graph crosses the x-axis. That's ultimately what you're finding. How many answers should this one have? Can anybody tell me? Three. It should have three. And how do we know that? Because of the degree. Whatever the degree of the polynomial is, that's how many answers you should end up with at the end of the day. All right? So when I get to one like this, I always check if there's a common factor that I could pull out of the whole thing. There's not. But I notice, oh, this thing has four terms. Why don't I try factoring by grouping? That's the one where you literally divide it into first two terms, last two terms. On this side, I can pull out an x squared. And then I have three X plus two left, right? On this side, what can I take out? Negative four. And then I'm left with three X plus two. If your parentheses match, which these do in this case, that means, yes, you can do this one by grouping. Sorry, I'm trying to avoid the glare. There it is. So, uh, if my parentheses match, that means one of my factors is 3x plus 2, and the other one will be these two put together, x squared minus 4. And then, did we do this one in class yesterday or Friday? I feel like we did. Because this one now splits, right? Because that's the difference of two perfect squares. What's that one split into? x plus 2. x plus 2, x minus 2. So now I can get my three answers. From this one comes what? What's the answer that comes out of that factor? Negative, Negative two thirds, because you're setting each of these equal to zero, right? I'm just being lazy and not actually writing it. But I would minus the two divided by three. So I get negative two thirds from that. I get a negative two from that one. And I get a positive two from that one. Should be three answers. There are three answers. We're so happy. You could also check these answers. You can take any of these three numbers, plug it back in, and see if you really do get zero back out. You should. And now let's look at 15. 15, this is not one that I'm going to factor by grouping. I don't have four terms here, but oh, alas, it's the difference of two cubes, which we learned about on Friday. So we had two new formulas. If you have the sum of two cubes, remember the formula was this, a plus b times a squared minus ab plus b squared. Am I off? I know I would be. There we go. So there's the sum formula. And then the difference formula, if you have a perfect cube minus another perfect cube, the formula is a minus b times a squared plus a b plus b squared. So you can see the formulas are very similar. You just have to know which signs go where. And then there they are. Now, all I have to do on something like number 15 is use the right formula and plug everything in in the right spot. So number 15 is as follows, x cubed minus eight. So that is a difference, right? Because I have a minus, so I'm gonna use the difference formula. First thing we need to do is figure out what a and b are. So you're really looking for the cube, oh, sorry. You guys gotta tell me when it's like all messed up. There we go. So first thing I have to do is figure out what the cube root of each of these things is. What's the cube root of x cubed? X, what's the cube root of eight? Two. Two. 
That's what I'm plugging in for A and B. And then I just use the formula. And then I just pop everything in and it's gonna be great. So I'll have X minus two and then A squared. So that's now X squared. And then for this one, I multiply the two together. So that's two X and I'm gonna add it plus two X. And then B squared is a plus four. So if you stopped here on 15, that's okay. But now going forward, I'm gonna want you to actually finish this because the directions are to find all the zeros, not just to factor it. There it is factored, but I wanna know what the zeros actually are. One of them you already know. What is it? Two, from this factor, the answer that's gonna come out of that is two. I'm gonna get two more answers from this, right? So now I need to take that thing. This does not factor again. I wish it did, our life would be so easy. But there are no factors of four that add to be two. Too bad, so sad. So what does that mean? That means you have to do either complete the square or quad formula, because those are the only two that'll work on any quadratic. I would complete the square, honestly, because this one's nice. A is one, B is even. So I'll just do my work over here. X squared plus two X plus four equals zero. So if I'm gonna complete the square, I'm going to minus the four, take half of B and square it. So that's one, one squared is one. So I add one to both sides. This side factors, X plus one squared, negative three, square root both sides. What do I need to remember when I take a square root? Plus and minus. And because that's a negative, what really comes out? I, and then I have a root three. And then all I have to do is minus that one over. So I have negative one plus minus I root three. And those are my other two answers. Because remember, I was supposed to have three all together. So negative one plus minus I root three. And there are my three. Hooray. Also, what does this tell me about the actual graph? Because starting tomorrow, we're actually gonna graph these things. This means that this graph will only ever cross the x-axis where? At two, that's it. It never crosses again. How do I know that? Because these are imaginary. So that means it's never gonna hit the x-axis again. If it were going to, those answers would have shown up right here. I would have found them and they wouldn't have been imaginary, but they are. And there's only three total answers that I found them all and two are imaginary. So it only hits the one time. Isn't that neat? I knew you'd like that. Okay. Um, and then, so there were other ones that you guys, there's only one, 17? I don't remember now. 17 you want? Sure. Okay, so let's have a look-see-loo at 17. Lucky for us, or maybe unlucky, maybe you don't like this, I don't know. But this is a four term one. So I'm gonna to try to factor this by grouping. Um, well, first I checked, is there anything to pull out of the whole thing? No. So now I'm gonna to try to factor by grouping. Also, I just wanna point out, just because something has four terms, doesn't automatically mean that you can factor by grouping. You're gonna try, right? Just like when I have a quadratic, I try to factor it because it's way easier than doing completing the square. So if I don't have to, I won't, but I gotta try it. So I try it. Here, I can take out X squared. I'm left with three X minus five. Ah, and look, this was the example I was trying to find on Friday and I couldn't. See how that's three X minus five? See how this is three X minus five? They already match. So what do you take out of this? A positive one. You have to take out something. So if it already is, or if you are looking at this and you're like, there's nothing to take out. You just take out a positive one, which leaves it exactly as it is. So now, oh, there's my, yeah, my parentheses match, three X minus five. And then the other one is X squared plus one. Oh, and I'm in the square again. I wonder if any of you try to factor this one, x squared plus one, and you tried to split that one up. 
Did you try? You can't. You can only split the difference of two perfect squares, not the sum. The sum doesn't split. Bummer. Well, how am I supposed to find my answers? Well, you got one of them right there. So this is gonna be five thirds, right? So this unfortunately does not split into positive and negative one. Like you want it, I know it's it's so, it would be so nice if that were just a minus sign, but it's not. So what do we do? Well, take the factor and set it equal to zero. X squared plus one equals zero. And let's solve this thing and see what comes out. Don't I have the minus one? So I have X squared equals negative one. And then don't I take a square root? Right, square root both sides, square to you, square to you. When I take a square root, do I need plus minus? And what's the square root of negative one? I, oh my gosh, it just comes out as positive negative I. Ah, yep, sure. There are my other two answers, positive and negative I. I'm supposed to have three, I have my three. This thing will only ever cross the x-axis at five thirds. It'll never cross again because these are answers are matching up. Did anybody need 19? Yeah. Oh, sure. Does anybody need 19? That was a uh, sum one, sum of two cubes one. Oh, no. We're okay there? 21. 21? Yeah. Okay. You good? Okay. All right, 21 then. Oh, yes. Now, if we're looking at 21, notice what's the degree of this whole thing? Four. Four. So how many answers should I have? Four. Four. Step one, if there is a common factor, take it out. <gasps> there is this time. Can't you take out an X out of the whole thing? You sure can. So you should, unless you want to complicate your life. But why? We got to learn how to work smarter, not harder, right? My life's motto. I guess if I was going to get a tattoo, maybe that would be it. Now, what do you put with that? Just that phrase, misspelled to make it funny? Anyway, what do you do with this X? Well, nothing really. I mean, that's going to give me one of my answers. What one answer do I know I have already? Zero, right? Think about it. If you plug in zero, don't you get zero back out? Zero is an answer. This thing is going to cross the x-axis at zero and three other places. I just don't know where they are yet. So I already have that one answer. So I'm kind of done with this part. I don't really need that again. I'm just, I'm done. Over here, now I have a four-term polynomial. I'm going to try and factor by grouping. So ignore this x because I really already took care of it. Um, split it in half. From this side, I can take out a 2x squared. And that would leave me with x minus two. Over here, I could take out a three. That leaves me with x minus two. So they match. So one of them is x minus two, and the other one is two x squared plus three. Hey, we got another answer, don't we? Give me another answer. Uh, positive two has got to come from that. So positive two, great. My last two answers are going to come from this thing which makes sense because it's X squared. So I know I'll have two more answers from this. I don't exactly know what they are. So I'm just gonna take two X squared plus three, set it equal to zero and I will solve. So let's minus the three, two X squared equals negative three, divide by two, divide by two, X squared equals negative three halves. But now I have to take the square root of both sides. When I take a square root, I need to remember plus minus. I also have a negative, so we're gonna pull that out to make it an I. And now 
I have square root of three over square root of two, which remember you can't actually leave it like that because you can't have square root of the denominator, so annoying. So remember how we fix it? What do I need to multiply by square root of two over square root of two? Mm -hmm. So now I will get my final answers, which are square root of six on top and just two on the bottom. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm way down so low and you can't see it. You don't tell me. There they are. So for my last two answers, I'm going to get positive negative i root six over two. And now I have four answers, just like I was expecting to have. This thing is going to cross the x-axis twice at zero and the two. Yep. The zero came from the x that we pulled out in the very beginning. So we had factored an x out of it. So I find just because that's a factor. So when you set that factor equal to zero, the answer is just zero, right? If I had factored out an x squared, that means I would have gotten an answer of zero twice. So that would count as two answers. If I had pulled out an x cubed from the beginning, that's a zero with a multiplicity of three. You got it three times. So that would count as three of your answers. Wow. Does that all make sense? Yeah, okay. Does anybody need 23? That isn't that, well, yeah, so look at 23. This one, you pull out an x squared. So you get two of your answers right away. You get zero as a double root. It happens twice. I wrote zero to the r, that's fine. That's fine, and that counts as two. So you should have four total answers, not total answers, you have four total answers for number 23, but two of them are zeros. Yep. Sure. So if we're going to do 23. Let's see. First things first. Pull out an x squared. Okay, so now I'm here. Oh, for Pete's sake. Someday I will figure out the perfect lighting situation. One time I tried this, and that seemed to help with the glare at least. Oh, yeah, maybe. Okay. What, what'd you do? I put a post note over the light. Maybe. Try and help not be such a dramatic glare right in that one spot. All right, anyway, so I pulled out this x squared. So this is a factor. If you set x squared equal to zero, you get the answer of zero and you get it two times. So in my list of answers, I'm going to have zero as a double root. That counts as two of my four answers, because in the original, it was degree four, right? So I should have four answers here. There's one, two. I got to find three, four. They're going to come from this, which makes sense, because that's a quadratic, right? So this thing is going to have two answers of its own. What are they? I have no idea. But this is just a quadratic. I can try and solve it by factoring if I want. I don't have to complete the square or quad formula if I can factor it. I do sine and divide. You do whatever your method is. So factors of 25 that add to be 26 would be a negative 25 and a negative one. I did the slide, now I do the divide. And I get my, oh, geez. Are you guys ever going to tell me when I'm off? I feel like no. But anyway, there we go. There's my remaining two answers. One of them is going to be a five from that. And then what answer comes from this? One fifth. And there are my four. One, two, three, four. Yes. So this thing is going to, I shouldn't say cross the x-axis as we're going to learn, but it's going to touch the x-axis at zero, five, and one fifth. Isn't that fancy? Okay, 
questions? Is everybody okay now with what we did last week? Yeah, we feel all right ish. Okie dokie. So, what in the world are we going to talk about today? That's a great question. Oh. Interesting. Now that I'm, I'm trying to make all these copies so far in advance, so I never remember, I'm like, surprised me too. <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh, you're gonna like this, maybe. Why don't I give you, I'm gonna give you this now. I won't make you wait for it. Let me hold punch. How was everybody's weekend? Yeah? Yeah, I'm gonna Yeah, no, this weekend felt really really fast and really short at the same time. I agree. My son started baseball this weekend. So cute. But it's like skills only. It's not even T ball yet. It's like, hey, throw this kush ball at this hula hoop and see if you can hit the ball off the tee. And do you have any idea what a base is? I should run past it. Make sure you step on it. I love the videos of the kids running in the opposite direction. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there was this video of this girl that ran after the ball, and her dad comes down to the yard. She flips out. She goes, I want the ball. <laughs> she just took off off the field after she did it. It was so funny. And I don't know if I said that. Okay, he also started parkour classes. I know. We had a busy weekend. He did that Friday and then baseball Saturday. He was over the moon. He got to jump on the big big trampoline. Make a lot of money. A little look at what I just gave you. All right. So uh, if we just look at the title here, there's a lot going on just right here. Fun, of course it's fun. Fundamental theorem of algebra rational root theorem and the conjugate root theorem. Oh my gosh, don't worry. It's all gonna make sense in a little bit. We've actually kind of already have been talking about this one here. This basically just tells you, hey, if the degree is four, you're gonna have four answers. If the degree is three, you're gonna have three answers. So we've already been talking about this. So degree, will always equal your number of solutions, total solutions. Um, rational root theorem, uh, let's see, do I wanna come back to that one? I'm gonna come back to that one. But I'm going to jump to the conjugate root theorem. This one tells me if one of, if I, well, actually, let me go back and look at the answers here from the homework. 
take a look at number uh, 21, for example. You don't have to pull yours out, but if I'm looking at this answer, notice that my imaginary solution did not come to the party by itself. Didn't it always have its conjugate pair? I always have plus minus I, blah, 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 blah. If I have an imaginary solution, it never comes by itself. Even go back to number 17, we had an imaginary solution. Huh. Notice that I is not there by itself. It brought a friend. I always have the conjugate pair, okay? So if I have an imaginary solution, it will always, always, always come in pair. Same thing will happen if it's an irrational solution. So if my one, one answer was, let's just say was two plus root three, you would automatically know that it's conjugate pair two minus root three is also a solution. <gasps> That's so cool. So conjugate root theorem tells us um, imaginary and complex roots always come in pairs. And it's their conjugate pair, right? It's not just some random one. So we'll say always come in conjugate pairs. You with me so far? Okay, so let's look at number one, okay? So number one, they want us to list all these things. State the number of complex zeros, the number of possible of real and imaginary zeros, and the possible rational zeros for each function. All righty. So this here, the number of complex zeros, they're just asking you basically how many total solutions will this thing have? So how many total answers is number one gonna have? Three, because that's its degree. Whatever the degree is, that's how many zeros I'm gonna find. There they all are. And I have three all together. Now, knowing that I have three answers, I don't know if those answers are gonna come out rational, irrational, imaginary. I have no idea. But what I do know, uh, so let's do, number of possible imaginary zeros. It is always possible to not have any imaginary zeros or, or irrational. I don't necessarily, so let's say imaginary or irrational, sorry. I don't have to have any. So maybe I don't have any at all. But is it possible to just have one? No, because they always come in pairs. So I can't just have one imaginary solution. I would have to have two. Could I have three? No, because they always come in pairs. So could I have four? No, because I only have three total, Oh yeah. right? There's only three total. So if I'm going to have any imaginary or irrational solutions, I'm either going to have none of them or I'm going to have two of them. Those are the only options because they always come in pairs. I can't have just one. I can't have just three and I can't have four because I don't have four solutions. So that's it. Either I have zero or I'm going to have two of them. You with me so far? So how many of these could be rational? Well, there's three total. If none of them are imaginary or irrational, how many would be rational? Three. So it's possible that all three of them are rational. 
My other case is that, remember, there's always going to be three total. So if two of them are imaginary or irrational, how many would that leave for it to be rational? Just one. Those are my possibilities. Are we okay so far? Yeah. You'll get the hang of this the more we talk about it, I think. And then this last piece that we're supposed to find, it says find the possible, oh, what are the possible rational zeros? Now, this is where this rational root theorem comes from. And this is wild. I don't know what the rational solutions are, but there's at least going to be one of them, right? No matter what, one or maybe all three of them are gonna be rational. Everybody follow that? So this thing is going to cross the x-axis somewhere. I just don't know where either once or it's gonna go three times. Now here is what is so crazy. I don't know what that rational number is, but it's I can create a list of numbers and I can guarantee you that that whatever, at least one rational solution that I have is in this list. I can guarantee it using this rational root theorem. Well, what the heck is it? Let me tell you, you ready for this? This is so crazy. So the rational root theorem tells us, sorry, I should have done this on like my notebook, but I don't know, whatever, rational root theorem. I'm just gonna write over number two. So I guess we just won't do that one. So if a function has a rational root, It must be, <laughs> I wrote mush, <laughs> must be in the list of, now this is going to look real weird until we do an example. Oh, wait a minute. Pause. Sigurd's got to check right now. Yeah, because now I'm, I'm blanking on the top of the right way. Hold on. Okay, good. See, I'm glad I checked. I did have it flipped. Hold on, we'll fix it. Internet, don't doubt me yet. Hold on. There it is. So let me give you a minute, jot that down, and then I'll explain what in the world this even means. already after 8 30. Like how did that happen? I actually don't know. I feel like we've been working the whole time. Well I feel like it just like press just started. I feel like I will get this I mean I'm not like no way I guess I spent more time on the homework than I thought. All right. 
So did everybody write this down? Because now I want to show you in uh, math language what I'm even talking about. I think in um, when I do this in D block, I'll write the notes actually in my notebook. So if you want, you can just check this afternoon for when I post those notes. So you're gonna make a video with D block. I might have to. I don't know. I don't right. want the internet to know that I forgot this. I wonder how the internet. They never forget. The what internet is, never forgets, and they never what forgive you. Show so that you have to attend D block. What if I do what? Just make it so you can't use this video. In A? Yeah, just, like we could just make it so you can't use this video. Yeah, like Friday. you guys did on Friday. Yeah, we could just do it. Don't do it. Because, yeah. I mean, I might. I, I'm going to probably go. Well, give you an excuse to use T-Box. Well, that's okay. I'll just, I'll try and use it because I messed up. Anyway, so everybody wrote this down. So let me explain what's even happening. So I mentioned a moment ago. If there's going to be a rational solution, I can come up with a list of numbers and guarantee that if the answer, if I know I'm going to have a rational root, it's in this list. So here's how you create this list. You're going to take the factors of your constant. So the number on the very end, right? So I'm just going to use number two as an example. So in this case, that would be 12. I take factors of that constant. Uh, so factors one, two, three, four, six, and 12, right? Would be factors of 12. I take all of those factors of this number and I divide it by all the factors of my lead coefficient, which in this case is just one. So that doesn't look that fancy, but that gets me, and I take positive and negative of all of them. That gets me my complete list. If I'm gonna have a rational solution, it's in that list. So let's do it for number one. So our possible rational roots. Oh, thank you. So I'm going to take all of my factors of my constant. Well, there's not that many factors of seven, right? It's just one and seven. So I'm going to take, uh, you know what, how I might do this? I'm just going to list them out. Factors of seven. I normally don't write all of this, but the first time through. So the factors of seven are just one and seven. The factors of my lead coefficient, which is just one in this case, the only factor of one is one. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of these numbers and divide it by all of these numbers. Well, that's just a one. So my list of possible rational roots are simply positive and negative one and positive and negative seven. So that means that this function is going to cross the x-axis at at least one of these four numbers. Positive one, negative one, positive seven, or negative seven. I don't know which one, but it's going to cross at at least one of them. And at a maximum, it could cross at three of them, right? Because I'm either going to have three or one rational zeros. And this is the list of all the possibilities. Wow. Let's try number three, because this one's a little bit more interesting. So how many total zeros am I going to have? Four, four. four right? Because that's just the degree. Total zeros is going to be four. Um, OK, so my number of possible imaginary Imagine, I spelled imaginary wrong. Or irrational zeros. Okay, let's try this. Do I have to have any imaginary zeros? No. No, I could have none. I could have two or four. Correct. There they all are. They have to come in pairs. So it's either going to be zero, two, or all four. That's totally possible to have all four of them be imaginary or irrational. Can happen. So 
So let's talk about the number of possible rational Yeah, because if none of them are imaginary, that would mean all four are going to be rational. If two are imaginary, then I'm going to have two that are going to be rational. And if all four were imaginary, then I'd have zero. So yeah, and again, I'm just listing the order doesn't really matter, but I, I just pair them up. Right? So if I, yeah, yeah. Now let's find what these possible rational zeros are. So if I'm going to have, I might not have any in this list because zero is a possibility. But if I'm gonna have any, if the two or all four, they would appear in this list. So the possible rational roots. And this one will give you a better idea because at least we have factors for both of them now, right? Let me see, move down a little bit so we can see. All right, so everybody watch this. So you're gonna start off by taking factors of your constant. So in this case, factors of six. You don't have to worry about the sign because I'm gonna take positive and negative of all of these. Okay, so let's just list the factors of six. One, two, three, and six. And now I need factors of two. What are the factors of two? One and two. So now what I need to do to make my full list, I need to take all of these numbers and divide them by all of these numbers. So it'd be positive negative one, positive negative two, positive negative three, positive negative six, then it would be positive negative one half, positive negative one, positive negative three halves, and then positive negative three. Yes. Yeah. So let me explain what she just did. She took all of these four numbers and divided them by one. So it's going to be, and sometimes people, instead of writing positive negative again and again and again and again and again, sometimes people just say positive negative all of these. So if I do all of these four divided by one, I just get one, two, three, and six. But now I need to keep going because now I need to take all of these numbers again and divide them all by two. So one divided by two gets me a half. Two divided by two is one. I don't need to put one in again because it's already in my list. It's already there. I don't need to list it again. So I'm not going to bother writing in two divided by two, but three over two, that's a new one. And then the same thing happens with six over two is just three and three is already in my list. So I don't need to write it again. So if I'm going to have any rational roots, it's one of these numbers, positive or negative one of these. I don't know which one but it's one of them. Okay. How are we feeling so far? Yes. Now we want to take it one step further. And I want to try and find these zeros now. I want to try, let's see. So if you look at number five, um, Five is actually kind of nice. They want me to list all the possible rational zeros, and then it's asking me to find them all. But they gave me one of them. They gave me one of the four answers already. I know there's going to be four altogether. They're saying, hey, here, here's a, here's a hint. Here's a starting place. We'll tell you that two is one of the answers. We need to try and find the other three. <gasps> Are you ready? That's okay, we're gonna to go together. Ready? So first it says, state the possible rational zero. So let's do that. Um, okay, so we're gonna have a little bit of a bigger list. So for my possible rational zeros, or remember zeros and roots are the same thing. So I need all the factors of 32. So there's a lot of those. One, two, four, eight, 16, 32. All right, it's not that bad. And then I want my factors of my leading coefficient, which is just two. So one and two. 
So to create my list, remember I'm going to take all of these numbers, divide them by one, oops, and then all of these numbers again and divide them by two. So it'll be positive, negative, all of these. So there's all of them divided by one, and now let's divide them all by two. So I get a half. I don't need to put one in again. I don't need to put in two. I don't need to put in four. I don't need to put in eight. I don't need to, oh, okay, I guess we're done. Does that part make sense? Is everybody okay so far? I haven't done anything too crazy. All right, now they have tasked us with finding what these zeros actually are, but they gave me one of them. So I hope, remember I told you that you were gonna be doing a lot of synthetic division? Yeah, I wasn't kidding. <sighs> so we are going to do synthetic division and we're gonna plug in two. And when we plug in two, we're going to take this from a quartic function down to a cubic function. You guys ready? So let's do our synthetic division. We're going to plug in two exactly like it is. The only time we do the opposite is when they give me a binomial. They didn't. They just gave me a number, so I'm just going to plug in the number. So remember how this works. First, make sure you're not missing any um, exponents. We don't need any zero placeholders. Four, three, two, one, nine. Nope, they're good. So I drop down all my coefficients. Two, negative 13, 36, negative 52, and 32. And I'm going to plug in two directly. What should happen here? Can everybody tell me? What should happen as I do these numbers? I know what answer should be right here. Do you know? It should be a zero. I should not get a remainder because they're telling me, hey, two is a zero. That means it's gonna divide in evenly. So when I do this, if I don't get a zero right here, I already know I messed up. So let's try it. Two times two is four. We get a negative nine. We're gonna multiply, that's a negative 18. That's 18 times by two, that's a 36. Oh, uh, what is that? Is it 36? Did I already mess up? That's not 18, is it? It is? Oh, okay. See, I doubt myself. Okay, two and 36 gets me a negative 16 times two is a negative 32. <gasps> Look at that. Oh my gosh, like magic. I got a remainder of zero. I was expecting a remainder of zero. <laughs> Remember what these are. There's your remainder. This is now your constant. This is x to the first, x squared, x to the third. So when I write this all nice and neat, I'm going to do this over here. Forget number six, I'm going to write right over it. 2x cubed minus 9x squared plus 18x minus 16. You are now down to this four-term polynomial. And now I'm going to cross my fingers, but I don't think we get this lucky. Darn it. Because now you could try and factor by grouping, right? I can try and cut it in half and factor both sides and see if I can get those parentheses to match, but I don't think I can. But if I could, I'd be so excited, right? Do you see that? See how it wouldn't work? My parentheses will never match. I could take out an x squared, but then I'd have uh, 2x minus 9. And on this side, I'm never going to have a 2x minus 9. So I can't factor by grouping. Okay, too bad, so sad. 
Big whoop. So what does that mean? Well, friends, that means that I need to keep going. I'm going to keep doing synthetic division with numbers in this list until I find another one that works. This is the part that could be a little tedious. Because yeah, I literally just have to go down the line. I keep plugging them in until someone else comes out with a zero. Bummer. I know, but it's okay. So I do the same thing. I'm going to drop down two, negative nine, 18, negative 16. I'm trying to get a remainder of zero. So I'm going to plug in a positive one. Sometimes uh, I write really lightly because I just keep erasing so I can use the same spots over again. So that's two, negative seven, negative seven, 11. And then once I realize, oh yeah, because right here I need to get a positive 16, I don't. So stop, positive one is not it. So now I erase and I'm gonna try negative one. And you literally just go down the line until you find someone that works. Let's try negative one. Negative two, negative 11, that's positive 11, that's 29, that ain't it. Now, I already know that positive two works, but it is positive, possible that positive two works twice because you can get double roots, you get triple roots. So I'm gonna try positive two again. Oh, and look, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Yes, yay, it worked. I'm so glad we tried it again. Why did you do it in the first place? Because they told me that two was an answer. So now I know I have two of my four answers already. Two of them. I got two as an answer two times. They gave me, gave it to me in the beginning. And now I got it again. Yes. And now, yeah. I did positive. I thought, did I mess up? No. If Sarah gives two. But you can get that same answer more than once. So that's why I tried it again and it worked. So they gave me two, it worked over here, but now I use my new ones and I plugged in two again and it happened to work again. So that means I got two as an answer twice. So two is at least a double root. <gasps> I know, but now here's what's so nice. Once you get down to this, because remember, here's my remainder. Here's my constant, here's x to the first and x squared. So now what I'm left with is two x squared minus five x plus eight. You can, it's just a quadratic now, you can solve this. You don't have to keep doing synthetic division anymore. You shouldn't because synthetic division would only give you the rational solutions. And what if these two come out imaginary? You would never find them doing synthetic, but synthetic will get you down far enough that now, oh, I just have a quadratic here, so I can solve this any of my ways that I solve quadratics. Can I factor this? So the factor is a 16, that has to be a negative five? No, I don't think so. So you'd have to do, I would do quad formula on this. So let's do it real quick, because I would not do completing the square. Yeesh. So negative B plus or minus big old square root B squared is going to be a 25 minus four times A is two times C is eight. All over two A would be four. Oh, sorry. Oh, what is that? So that's 25 minus 64. Yep, see it's going to be imaginary.
I have my four answers now, friends. It might have been a long road to get there. So we got two as a double root. And then my remaining two are five plus minus I root 39 over four. Holy moly. Thoughts? Yeah, Confusing, you don't like it? <laughs> so, let's see. Wait, yeah. Oh, wait, never mind. I'm just kidding. So why don't I, um, let's just do number seven for homework. That's it. Because these can take a lot of time. So remember what you want to do. You want to start by listing off for me whatever the rational roots are. So let's, I'll just make a list of what I want you to do. List possible rational roots. Second, you're going to take three and plug it in. So do synthetic division with three. Take that answer. And try to factor by grouping. If you can, great. If you can't, then you have to continue down your list. If you can't, then do synthetic division with numbers in your list. Find all four answers. You can do it. Yeah. So for this one, the way of like factors is the first thing. Yes. So you're going to take factors of your constant, which in this case is three and divide those by the factors of the leading coefficient, which also happens to be three. Oh, that's like, oh, yes. Yeah. So you take one and three and divide them both by one, and then take one and three and divide them both by three. So let's just do number one together. <laughs> so the factors of three are one and three, right? So here, I'll do it up here. Factors of three, one and three. And then it just so happens that your leading coefficient is also three. So factors of three again, one and three. So that means my list is one and three divided by one. So it's going to be positive, negative. One divided by one is one. Three divided by one is three. But then I have to take one and three and divide them both by three. So I get one third. And then I get one again, but I don't need to list it. So there is the answer to step one. Positive, negative, one, three, and one third. So if I'm going to have a rational root, it's in this list. And I already know I have one rational root because they gave it to me. They said, hey, I'll give you a head start. Start with the number three. They won't always give you a head start, but it sure is nice when they give it to you. Yeah. So we just like say, um, I kind of forgot head start. For part two? Uh, yeah, I know how I guess it's a bit of a Did you plug in three? Yeah. They come out with a zero as a reminder? Zero should be that. So like I need to start doing more. I'll just turn it into one of our Oh, you break down yours. Oh. Just make sure that. And then you go fly. That's not a good one. That's a good one. 
Yeah, and I'll change everything. 